Did you know how far your nine irons typically goes? No idea. No. Most of the, most of the golf tech work you've been doing is just kind of working on form and yeah, just trying to get some kind of consistency. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a better one. Does that feel about right for a nine iron? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a favorite club that you like to hit more? Probably a seven. Yeah. That's good. Switch to seven. Let's hit a few sevens. So you hit a, a nine there that went about 80 yards in the air, maybe 90 yards total. Just so you know. What is about an average distance for a nine? Um... Well, you just said you've only like, really taken like 10 lessons, so for you, yeah. you should be hitting your 9 like 170 yards, <laughs> not 70. <laughs> so we got to figure out how to find you 100 more yards today. <laughs> so, but that's all right. We're, we'll get you there. Okay, so that was... Let's see there. Club head speed on that one was about 71. Carry was 110. It went to 122. Yep, similar. 74 on the club speed. It's a little faster, but it didn't go any further because it went kind of more out to the right. Yeah, 108 and then 120. Don't try to hit it harder, just kind of keep your form like you're working on. Yeah. What's your checklist? What, what, are, what are the things you're kind of, as you get set up, what are the things that you've been working on? Uh, recently, my wrist, uh, when I go, I'm kind of the angle of my club, I'll, I tend to go out a lot. And then... Like, uh, like over this way? Yeah. Yeah. And then my wrist, I, it's always, I always try to overcompensate with my right arm mm. and it just comes in at a weird angle and mm -hmm. I think my club's facing more more to the right yeah okay so does that does that mean like uh maybe your other pro has said like over the top or something like that you're coming over the top yeah, yeah. yeah. okay yeah. and then t t uh, talk to me a little bit more about that right arm what's the right arm doing it's um it's like releasing early it's extending early you're not like yeah yeah okay all right yeah. 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 I'm trying okay. to figure out how to explain it. No, yeah. I, never I mean, I had to actually explain it before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, that was a better contact. Yeah, that was probably my best hit so far. Yeah, that was pretty good. Let's see what that one did. All right, so that was 112 in the air, 137 total. 70 miles an hour so that's good you don't need to swing like faster necessarily um, by the time we're done you are going to be swinging faster but <clears throat> from what i can tell and this is always a you know a little bit of a roll the dice in in the first lesson you know, i'm going to have you do some things you've never done before and we just i'm just gambling on the, my expertise that it's going to work <laughs> All right, so just keep doing what you're doing. I'm gonna have you hit um, a couple drivers here too. Yeah. So before we get to driver, talk to me about your grip. Like you've, I mean, at some point somebody's talked to you about how to hold it, and yeah. So what's your checklist there? So it was funny when I, when I started. 
I had a different instructor yeah. and then he got too busy so I switched to another guy. Yeah. And we never really had a full conversation about the grip. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so yeah, I usually kind of just told it like this, but yeah. I don't really have any sort of... There's no real reason? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's just more like that's what's comfortable or that's what you've seen other people do so you just copy that. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. I'm definitely big on the grip and big on moving the club properly. Yeah. Um, some of the stuff that I see you doing, so talk to me also about your posture. It looks like you're trying to find a certain bend or a certain, like, you're leaning over quite a bit. What's, talk to me about that. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to have more of like a flat back because a lot of the times I like hunch over. Okay, um, okay. But as far as like being close to the ball, I, I don't really have any sort of methods to that either. Right, so it's just kind of the back. So what's the key? Like, what have you been told about the back being flat? As why why is that important? I guess why why would you worry about that? I, I guess just for balance. Yeah. Um, like when I first started, a lot of times my my feet would come off the ground. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that was just like a big thing at first, just keeping my feet on the yeah, ground. Yeah. 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 Um, and then I don't. I feel like I don't get a lot of power from my, my actual rotation, my hips. Mm. So that's where I feel like I'm kind of overcompensating with my arms trying to mm. power it through mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. you know, being a smooth stroke. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so good. continue. Go through your, your steps. You put your hands on there, kind of how you've always done it, and you've got a, a setup. When you set up here, is there a reason why you've got, like, the club sits this way with the toe up a little bit, or is that no discussed? It's just kind of what you do? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, let's hit a few drivers. So we got some time over the next few days to really kind of, this is like your golf boot camp, right? <laughs> <laughs> So go ahead and let's uh, make your swings here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so how does that feel compared to normal? Not bad. I was kind of surprised that actually went well. <laughs> yeah. Because recently, the last like three lessons, I was working on my driver. Yeah. And it was really not even doing, like, it was like doing a half swing. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. And I couldn't even, first couple times, get it off. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's kind of been a big stride. So that one was kind of a pleasant surprise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so on that one there, we got a 84 miles an hour. It flew um, 179, went to 207. Okay, so 207 yards driver. Okay, so let's see, it was a little faster, 87 miles an hour on that one, and but it didn't go any further because it went off to the right, right? It sliced right. a little bit, 153 and 200 total. Okay, so we're going to tackle this a little bit differently because that's what I do. <laughs> okay. um, I think the environment that you came from, thanks. Um, is very kind of like uh, science lab-ish, you know, in a sense that you're kind of indoors and you got some you know, angles that you're worried about in video and you're trying to, you know, do all these certain things. And um, what I find when I get a student that's come from that environment, a lot of times it's too engineering, it's yeah. too mechanical, it's too robotic. Um, yes, you 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 know, your college water polo guy. Yeah. <laughs> There's got to be some athlete in there somewhere, right? Yeah. Um, we don't want to be total engineer. We got to figure out how to have, be moving and swinging freely and all that. So that's what we're going to do. So come with me. Leave your uh, driver over there. <clears throat> this is going to be different. So you have to kind of be open to what we're doing here. All right, I'm going to give you a... Let me give you a weed whacker 
And then you're gonna come over here and mow, mow me some grass. All right, so <clears throat> if I was like, all right, Jake, that's my entire field of my backyard. I mowed it this far and I need you to start here and kind of mow me down and keep going all the way, get the sagebrush out, all that stuff. Um, if you had to start on these long grass right here, what would you, what hand would you use to start mowing that down? Like as far as going like this? Yeah, or like, yeah, no, yeah, like we're trying to basically mow it to, mow it to this height, right? We're trying to get it mowed down. What would you do to mow that down? <laughs> try it, try a few and just see. All right, so see how you're brushing it? You're not really breaking any grass? Yeah. Let's put some speed on it so we can use this like a, like a sword, right? Like my saber, right? So let me show you. I want you to give it one of these, all right? Let's get a little bigger, a little wilder. Get the shoulders, there you go. Good, yep, there you go. Play any tennis ever? Nope. Nope, okay, that was a good tennis forehand, right? <laughs> so, same thing. Do right hand, hey, right hand again, just, right, just, there you go, right? So you can see what you're doing. You're pulling your shoulder up, yeah. pulling your arm up. How's your body doing? You've got any shoulder issues we need to worry about? Not that I know of. Nope, okay. So you just were able to mow down some more grass because you created more length, right? right? But there's a, there's a release of this energy, this whipping motion, and it has to come out of the whole body, but primarily kind of through the right shoulder, down through the right arm, into the right wrist. You also know you're not gonna like squeeze this thing super tight, because right. then you'll just go stiff arm back and forth, right? So go ahead and do some more. I'm gonna pick it up and whip it through. There you go, good. Good, okay. Now we'll move along, let's move over here. So this grass is a little taller. And when you do that right hand, in fact, let's do a couple left-handed first, but we're gonna do them backhanded. So we're gonna do them in that direction. But here's what I don't need you to do now. I don't need you to bend down and trim it at like low height. I just need the tops cut off, okay. right? So go ahead and pull the club back and whip it through. Uh-huh, good. All right, so as you go back, go back and stop on this one for me. Good, All right? Freeze right there. See how your left arm's bent, your wrist is cocked. That's good. So if you've ever been told, keep your left arm straight, that's bad. Yeah. Because how can you weed whack with a stiff left arm? You can't, right? You have to use your arm to weed whack. Right. So you have to bend it to do that, right? So let's switch back. Your left arm is not as strong, not as coordinated as the right arm, right? I see that all the time. So do that again. Now give me, trim the tops off. So let's just go for this one right here. We'll give it one swing, pull it back and chop the top off. There you go. All right, now pick another one, come over here. Yep, pull it up and whip it through. There you go. Let's try that a couple more times. Good. Now where you're gonna create your most speed is just through the wrist, Yeah. right? Now, what we have to do when we hit a golf ball is we have to get this stick angled down toward the ground, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if we were playing baseball or we were in this tree over here in these bushes and we had to chop it down at chest height, you could whip it and go sidearm, right, and chop it down. But we're we're down here in the ground. So now we'll take your stick. I want you to chop this grass, which is closer to the ground, and I want you to do it more vertical, right? So instead of trimming it down, I want the tip of that stick to kind of cut in a line through the grass. So you're going to raise your arm up higher. Yep, and then you're going to kind of swish it through the grass. There you go. There you go, good. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yep, now on the downswing part, do it fast. Go ahead and whip it. There you go, good. All right, so now you see how you're standing? You're not taking a stance. Yeah. You're just standing there. That's what you would do if I said, all right, I need you to trim all of this. 
You're like, are you kidding me? I'm going to be here all day, right? Well, <laughs> you wouldn't put your back flat. You wouldn't, like, sit your butt out. You wouldn't squat your knees. You would just stand and whip it through the air, right? So go ahead and do that a couple more times. There you go. Good. All right, so your stance, your posture, that it's okay if your back is rounded. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat. Right. Some of the things that you've been taught, in my opinion, you've been taught to do because they, that person believes that's the answer to the problem. And that information just gets passed down from coach to coach. In golf tech especially, they go through a lot of training. They're trained to make sure they're looking at certain numbers. And when someone's not doing something right, according to their numbers, they've got certain keys that they go to to tell them, hey, this is what you need to do, right? It's not necessarily, to me, the simplest and most athletic way to do it. It works for some people. It just doesn't work for everybody, especially athletic people. They just get in there and they get a little too kind of clogged up and they start, like, overthinking it. How much thinking is going on here? Not much. <laughs> right? Not much. And we're creating speed. Yeah. We've got a stick. We're swishing it. We're creating speed. All right. So... Um, we're going to continue the weed whacking, but I'm going to give you a different tool now. So, here's a... You have ping irons. I'll give you a ping 7 iron. So, come on over here again. Now, you have a different tool. It's better designed for weed whacking. Right? You can mow this down a lot better that, with that flat face than with this pointy stick. Right? So use two hands, but as you do it, just weed whack. Don't think of golf swing. Think, I'm going to pick my arm up and swish it through there. All right? So your job is to just mow the grass down. There you go. Good. Yep. And as you're doing that, you're feeling in your wrists, there's a little bit more movement going on. Yeah. Compared to where you were, it was a little stiff, right? And maybe that was something that you were told, okay, I need you to kind of stiffen up your wrist. I don't need your wrist to get so um, so much work. Is that accurate or is that something? Yeah. I, I was almost like losing the club. Uh, backswing, yeah. So I was kind of told at least like, you know. Kind of hold on yeah. to it. Yeah. yeah, right. So the golf ball needs to get completely smashed, right? It needs to get destroyed. Yeah. It doesn't need to get waved at or brushed, it needs to get pummeled so it takes off and flies, right? You've got the speed, I can tell already, that when we get over here, your seven iron, instead of going 108, 110 yards in the air, it, it's, it's probably gonna get close to 200 in the air, right? Just by doing what you're doing here. And now we have to have the confidence that when you pull your arms back and whip it through that you're gonna connect, right? right? So there, there's a little risk we gotta take there, but yeah. let's just continue this action. So as you do it, just hold the club, you know, and pull the club back and chuck it, like whip it. There you go. That's better. Good. All right, now we're on a little bit of a slope, so you feel like you have to bend over a little bit more. Yeah. All right, so stand on the other side of the slope and face like you're going to hit a ball toward me. Now your feet are lower, so you don't have to bend very much. Yep, so just continue that. Just mow it. There you go. There you go. That's your new golf swing. <laughs> what do you think? I mean, it feels good, but once again, I'm not hitting, hitting the ball, so I have no idea. Right, we'll see. Happen. We'll see, right? So, if you're athletic and you take your hands and arms and you put them on there, and we're going to talk about your grip because it's not quite right. Yeah. Um, but we, when you take that end of the stick and you pull it back and you whip it through, there are way more important things to making it go far and straight than the way you position your back, you know, the way you sit your knees, the position of your, your shaft or whatever it is. So many more important things. So put your hands on there. Let's talk about your grip a little bit. So here's what I need for you to start embracing. Instead of putting both thumbs kind of straight down, mm -hmm. I want you to put both thumbs down the right side. So twist your hands to the right, keep going kind of a little bit more like that so that when I look down and when you look down you can read that titleist word this thumb needs to go here this finger needs to go a little bit further out like that 
right? Give it a waggle, right, in that thumb and finger. Let's get this thumb up underneath here a little bit, not quite all the way there, right? So we'll, we'll build it with one hand first. So take both hands off. Let's put the left hand on there. Now start in the fingers, roll the wrist over, and then put the thumb down. Yep, I'll show you how to do that. So start with your fingers again, fingertips, roll the wrist, then this thumb goes back over here, like that. Right, so start over, fingers, wrist, thumb down. There you go. Right now, let's do a one-handed, left-handed swing through this rough. Yep, so you're gonna kind of pull it back and then there you go. So I want you to try to reposition your hand if, if necessary to find a position where it's gonna be your strongest, most easiest way to, to propel that club. So do it one-handed, left hand, kind of pull it up, mow it down, that looked pretty good. I feel pretty good? Yeah. Yeah, so now put your right hand on there in such a way that it's now going to come the, the left hand. So um, the way we do it is we start with right hand only. So take the left hand off, put your right hand on there, and I want you to figure out how do I, how do I position my hand so that I can do one-handed swings with my right hand. So take a swing and then let's see if it's in the, if it's close or not. That felt weird. A little weird, so adjust it. My thumb's supposed to be a right, like, yeah. where does my pinky go on all yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, good question, yeah. So when, like, if I were to say throw a ball, you're going to throw a ball with your finger like that, right? Like right. a baseball, yeah. you're going to, right, wing it. So that's what you're doing is you're throwing a stick. So when you put your hand on there, that finger, that long finger, needs to feel like it can do some chucking, right? Like if I said, all right, Jake, you and I, club throwing contest, we need to chuck our seven irons over that house, like, this is how you're going to hold it. Yeah. Well, this is the overhand version. This is the underhand version. So if you had to throw the club as far as you could underhand, how are you going to hold it? Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. Like if it's like, you know, we're kids, we got our lightsabers, so we're going to beat the crap out of each other. How are you going to hold your lightsaber to, <laughs> to smack somebody, right? Yeah. That's it. So take a couple of swishes through the grass and just see if that seems like it's in a better spot. Yeah, there you go. Because right? what has to happen is as you go back, this wrist on your right hand has to kind of load up. When it loads up, now you can propel it. You can chuck it. Because if it's not held properly, you're not going to get this loading and unloading feeling, right? Right. So now put your left hand on there. And just kind of f figure out where it was before. Start with the fingers, roll the thumb, or roll the wrist. Give, it, give me a waggle, go like this, right? Turn around, look at that tree, right? That's, your, that's what you gotta beat down. <laughs> like, how are you gonna put your hands on there to beat that tree, chop it down, right? Yeah. Like, we're, we're like naked and afraid. We're out in the woods, we gotta cut a tree down. You're not gonna assemble your hands on an ax like you were on a golf team. But it really should be that, it really should be more like that. Like you, you're taking a stick and like I said, you're gonna demolish this golf ball. So how are you gonna put your hands on there in such a way that you can really chuck it through there? Because what happens just like that, you hit the ground a little, right? Yeah. Well, if your hands aren't on there the right way, then you get wrist injuries, you struggle with like contacting the grass, and flex your wrist the wrong way. So like chopping wood or, or hitting a baseball with a baseball bat or chopping down a tree, you gotta get your hands on there in such a way that when you collide with the object or the ground, it's not gonna like buckle your wrist or hurt your wrist, right? So that's how you organize it in your head. So do a couple more swings there, see if you can. So just right here first? I, I would usually start with the left hand, yeah, kind of get the feet, get it kind of the fingers, roll the wrist a little, right? And then right away, you kind of start waggling to figure it out. Like you already start kind of twisting, waggling. Yeah, right? Now it's start, now you're, you're starting to find the hand placement based on what you're about to do. The purpose is swish the club. The hold is relative to what, how do you swish it? What makes you swish that stick the best? Yep, there you go. Yeah, there you go, that's pretty good. Right, that's much better. And now as you're swinging, your arms are hinging, the wrists are loading up, you're creating more speed. So if I said, all right, you know, bigger target, what are we going for here, right? Now you gotta hit this bush right here, right? 
So go ahead and set up like you're gonna chop a piece of that, that bush off there. Mm-hmm, yep. There you go, there you go. Take your aggravation out on the, <laughs> all right. There you go. Now, doesn't this feel like athletic? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does a little bit. Like what you were doing over here was more engineering. Yeah. You know? So let's go be athletic and see what happens. Now, if we don't make contact, maybe we'll add a little engineering back in there. But Should I use this club still? No, I'm going to... Oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Hit that ball like that. Even though it's teed up like a driver, we don't care. Pretend it's a weed. <laughs> kind of start waggling the wrist. Yeah, right? Now just don't take a golf stance. Just stand there. Ah, much better. Yep, now pull it back and then whack the weed. There you go. The little grip cap fell off. That's oh, all right. Like, what was that? Yeah, try another one. Here, we'll do your driver. Yep, that's exactly how I want you to do it. Yep, tee it up. Pull the club back, whip it through. As far as accuracy is concerned, as long as your ball ends up somewhere on planet Earth, we're succeeding, right? <laughs> so I don't have any expectations. Pretend it's a weed, pull it back, whip it through. There you go. That was easy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. try again, try again. waggle the wrists we're gonna we can always think of it this way we can always make the ball go straight that's the easy part your job is to be athletic and create some speed athletically easily comfortably in a relaxed way arms are loose whipping the club that's your job i can help you make it go straight your job is just pull it back and weed whack yeah go for it There you go, All right? So now you're already hitting at like 240 yards instead of 200. Yeah. Right? Well, when, I'm like thinking about it. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, complete. just do it, right? Try it again. This is way more fun this way, I think. <laughs> yeah, because the checklist of things in your head at this point is what? <laughs> Weed whack? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> For we're down to one, so that's good, right? Yeah, so you kind of waggle the wrist, right? There you go. Take a nice big cut at it. Big back swing and create some speed. That's all right. Yeah, no worries. Try again. Like if I said you just weed whack the top of the weed, well, you just get another chance to cut the bottom. Yeah. It's still there, so you get another swing at it. Yeah, there you go. Good. Yeah, relax your arms, pull it back, create some... So much better. Now you just hit it like almost 300. <laughs> that went straight too. Dead straight. I actually had a little draw. All right, so my goal is to not have to coach you, right? <laughs> my goal is to tell you to weed whack and we're done. Like we're, this, this project is over. Um, your goal is just relax, create speed, whip it through that space, and then, yeah, we'll just see what happens. We don't know yet. So far, we've gone from 200 to 240 to 300, and that was pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, we'd whack it away. There you go, another little draw. It wasn't as good yeah. because it didn't quite hit the sweet spot. Could you feel or hear the difference? Yeah. Yeah. I also lost my balance a little bit pulling yeah. back. But. There you go, right? <laughs> so there is an element of precision, but for, for right now, that was still 200 and probably 40 yards rolling down the fairway. Yeah. That's what you'd call, a, eventually, that's what you'll call a good miss. <laughs> Today, that's like your second best drive. <laughs> yeah, try again. Yeah. And then the pressure that you hold your grip it's not much right yeah. it's just enough so that when you fling this thing it does the club doesn't go flying off over to the house over there right. if you grip too tight you don't get the chance to whip it right so do a practice swing 
kind of pull it back, get your balance, and then chuck it. Good. There you go. Yeah, pull it back and give it a good throw. Yeah, nice. Really good. Okay, go for it. That's okay. Topped it. That's all right. Didn't hit low enough, right? You <laughs> yeah. trimmed the top of the weed. You didn't get the bottom of the weed. Try another one. But your club head speed has basically doubled. So from 86, it's over 100 now. So, and, and it's, you didn't automatically, you didn't in the last 15 minutes get stronger. Right. You just got freer. You got more athletic. Right, go for it. Hey, there you go. Nice high draw. Probably close to 300 again. Yeah, it does feel a lot more relaxed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you'll see on the video that we're making that it's going to look way more relaxed. <laughs> you know, and it, and, and the, the concern, obviously, you know, you take 10 lessons and, and you're still, you know, you know, less than 10, you're hitting half drivers and, and bunting it into a net. Right. You know, and I, I don't mean to discredit that, but I tell I, I see it all too often where the person in front of the coach gets taught the same way as every other person. You're a college polo, you know, water polo player. Yeah. You know, and you've done other sports over the years. You've seen school. You're, it's like mandatory to be able to go play softball every now and then, right? Yeah. So it's not like you've never swung a bat. Right. So come and hit this seven iron for me, right? So you seven iron just sitting there in the rough. It's just to think of it as a weed sitting on top of the grass. Take your grip. Your drop of your legs is just to move you in range so that you can actually hit the weed. That's your job of your feet. It's just to bring you close enough so that you can hit hit the ball. Yeah, so go go for it. That's all right. You just hit the top of it. So try again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't need to slow yourself down don't need an extra angle all you need is just throw the club a little lower so it mows into the grass instead of hitting the top do a practice swing see if you can mow here so if we if we nudge the ball over into the rough like say right here you get to mow all of that from that short grass to here just try to mow that down a little bit for me Gonna have to mow a little lower. Oh, that was better, right? So we got some tuft of grass flew up. There it is, right? That's about the right height. That was it. So now just mow the ball down in that same area. There you go. I don't even know where it went. You didn't see it? No. Well, that was the best seven iron of your life. <laughs> good. Right there. Yeah, it was like 175 yards in the air. <laughs> Right, not 110. Yeah. Right. So we said, I said, our goal, my goal, was to be to get you to hit it around 170 to 200. I mean, you said, how far should this club go? And I said, well, 170, yeah. not 110. But I think with your strength and your speed that you're creating, you know, in Park City where we're at elevation, 200 yards for seven iron is going to start to become kind of like your normal club. Right. right? So go for it. Just mow, mow that grass down again. Yep. Yeah, pull it back. There you go. Mm -hmm. Right, so you lost a little balance with the feed, kind of spun your hips. So your precision of, of hitting the weed. Now the difference here is that that field of weeds, there's a thousand of them for you to hit. Right. This only has one weed, right? You have to hit the top off. You have to mow that down. You can't just hit everything in its pathway. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, but that's okay. I mean, that's all we're doing is refining this a little bit. Yeah. Nicely done. There you go. I love that wrist action to kind of get that whipping. Yep. So you're going to create a little bit more stability with the feet. Yep. Chuck the club through there and mow it down. There it is. Did you see that one? I didn't. No. They're going much higher. Yeah. I'm used to looking a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're... I'm going to make fun of you for a second, but you were bunting it over here, 110, and it wasn't even reaching the apex of the mountain, basically. Yeah. 
See that cloud up there? Yeah. It went between those two. See that blue space? Yeah. It, that's where it went. <laughs> so that's where you got to look next time. Okay. <laughs> Having fun yet? Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is fun. It's good when I get to, you know, work with someone who can just take the coaching and just go with it. There you go. Yep. Wristing, kind of arming, relaxing, creating some speed. That one there squirted off to the right. So we hit that off the toe, right? Did you feel a twist in your hand maybe? Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Yeah, so we didn't hit the sweet spot. So at speed, right now, let's say you're swinging that seven iron. Uh, let's see what Trekman says. Yeah, so before you were swinging your driver at 86, you just swung that at 90. So you're now swinging your seven iron faster than you were swinging your driver before. You didn't collide square. Yeah. So what happens at speed is there's an abrupt change. So whenever you feel that twist, let me see your club. Um, here, hold that in. The part that you hit was here. So put both hands on there. So when the ball hits here, it abruptly goes. So that one you would have feel you would have felt the grip spin backwards. Yeah. If you hit in here, you'll feel it go that way. So it'll slip in your hand. And you shouldn't be holding on super tight. So there will be a slippage, um, but that's what happens. And so now you know if it slips backwards, that toe is being hit. If it hits in here, it'll the toe will go that way. So then you can get an idea based on what you feel in your hands. If you're standing maybe too close, too far, that one there, you just hit hit the hit the toe of the club. That's what that part is called. So I don't know if anyone's ever explained that to you, but this is how you remember it. It's like your foot, toe, heel, sole. Oh, oh, right. No, that makes that. Yeah, it makes it easy. Yeah. yeah. This is called the face. I don't, this is not the face of my foot. I don't know. I think it's called the face just because someone called it that. But um, the toe and the heel and the sole, those are simple because you remember it just like your foot. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> and then that part connecting, that black part, that's called the ferrule. And there's another part called the hosel. It's not called the ankle or the, <laughs> you know, we stop at toe, you know, heel and sole. So get your hands on there, pull it back, whip it through. Yeah, if your hands are getting like a little fatigued, it's probably because maybe you are squeezing a little bit too tight. That's okay. So now what we want is efficient weed whacking. If I'm like, Jake, buddy, you're halfway through the field. You're like, okay, I'll get there. Just give me some more time. Yeah. Which means you're like, okay, I'm swinging. I've been swinging so hard that I'm wearing myself out. I have to swing at a pace that's going to allow me to mow the rest of the field down without quitting. So now when you swing, let's swing at a pace that if I said, all right, Jake, I need you to hit all, every bucket of balls on the range, you're not going to swing at it like you've been swinging. Like you're not going to swing 100 mile an hour, seven iron all the time. So let's swing at a little less pace, but we're still chucking it. We're still whipping it through there. So let's see what, see what we get now. Yep, just relax the grip. Yep. Kind of pull it back, give it a nice comfortable throw. Yeah, something like that. That's pretty comfortable. There it is. Look up. Did you see it? I see, missed it again. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually the best seven iron of yeah. your life right there. Now that was really good. It took off high draw, went through the cloud up there. We don't care. You don't need to see where it goes. I just know you it just, feels good. So. You just need, yeah, it felt amazing. That one probably felt great because it sounded so good. No, that was really good. Yeah, eventually you'll be on tour, and then you'll just have spectators to watch <laughs> your ball. You just you're like I, I, st I still have never seen a ball. <laughs> there you go, nice and relaxed. Create some speed, just efficient speed, right? There you go. Another one. Did you see that I one? Still can't see it. No way. Yeah, no, that was good. Well, what's happening, and this is normal. Um, especially since you've spent some time indoors too, because yeah. you normally hit and it goes into a net. Yeah, I'm just looking directly in front yeah. of you. Yeah, and so what's happening too though, which is the more important adjustment, is the ball speed. Yeah. So what you're not seeing is not necessarily like trajectory. The ball is leaving way faster than before, so you can't see it. So here, you, the cameraman, and um, so 
all the right here. Yeah, I'm gonna go back that way to where the truck is. Keep the camera on everything here, but don't look through the screen. Okay. Watch the box. Alright? So I'll show you this the, the trajectory. So when you hit that last one, it'll be like this. Okay. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can see it easier from behind. Now look how hard I'm working to do that. Right? Yeah. So I said, just squish the leads. So you're like, okay, this is how I squish. <laughs> see if you can actually see these when they take off and and hopefully what I just demonstrated there is just more reinforcement that is just pick it up and whip it like don't there's not a whole lot more to that yeah we don't have to overthink this thing much better setup see it Okay, so that one wasn't as good as you've done, yeah. but that's okay. Now at least you're seeing it. <laughs> Put another one on the on the rough there. Yeah, there you go. Get the waggle, relax your body, pull it back. Did you see that one? Yep. Yeah, there you go. That's more like it. Yeah, I was just totally not looking at the right spot. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's spot and speed, like the ball's jumping out, like it's taking off, it's flying faster. That's what we want. Yeah, it's like your 300 yard drives, I mean, they're just, they were going even further. Try again, then we'll go back to that driver again. Ah, That's all right. I lost my grip on that, actually. Yeah, so what happened was you ran... I mean, we're hitting out of the rough. Yeah. We're trying to make it weeds. So we, we can go back here. We'll hit a couple off the off the short grass, right? But what happened on that one is you ran into the weeds so much that it stopped your hands. But that's good to know. Because we don't just play golf on the range. We're going to play on the course. Right. <clears throat> and you're going to hit your ball and all this stuff. And then this is like something to remember. Oh, yeah. I better, like... Make sure I'm holding a little, you know, looser, actually, not tighter, because I want the club to whip through, because it's kind of like this equal and opposite reaction thing. It's like when two objects collide, the you just collided with a stationary object, so all the force that you created went into the ground, but then it came right back into you, back, yeah. right? I, I mean, I could feel you it. You can feel yeah, it. Yeah. Yep. So if your hands are looser, what happens is when that vibration comes back into your body, if you're holding it a little lighter, it kind of dissipates because if you hold, that's how people get tendon injuries in their wrists because they grip so tight and then they hit a rock or a tree root and they're gripping so tight that all that force comes back into the tendon and then it, you know, tears it or you know, does something bad to it. So... Um, go ahead, and then now that you have less, you know, weeds to go through, let's see if you can kind of make a nice, re you know, release of the hands there. Kind of trim it off the top. Yep, you did. A little too much off the top. Yeah. Yep, try another one. Put your ball in that little shorter grass. Yeah, there you go. Good. Mm -hmm. Keep your eyes kind of down so that you know where you're throwing this club. There it is. Did you see that one? Oh, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> That's much better. Much better. 
All right, let's go back to driver. How's your wrist doing? You were kind of grabbing it. It's good. I, it's I, okay now. I'm yeah. not, I've, yeah, you're right. I was just overthinking way too much mm. swinging. Yeah. And now it's like... <laughs> Weed whacking, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, well, you're not alone. Your dad was a head case, too. <laughs> <laughs> your mom's actually got the best swing. Really? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so here, take a drink of water. Is that yours? Get yours. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Take a drink of water, just kind of digest this for a second. All right? So it's not not as maybe as much thinking and angles and controlling stuff as it is you know you're taking that now you got to think of how golf was probably started it would have been like a shepherd in scotland yeah. right he's by himself he's got 50 sheep he's looking after he's bored because they're not doing anything he's got a shepherd's cook he flips it upside down sees a rock and hits the rock then he's like there's another rock. I'll see if I can hit that rock closer to the tree. And then he has his buddy, his shepherd buddy. He's like, I bet I can hit this rock closer than you can. And that's basically how, the, you know, this type of a game starts. Right. So now we have these high-tech sticks, <laughs> these high-tech balls, and we're playing in this vast landscape with man-made hazards. You know, like a bunker was probably where the sheep bedded down. They just made these holes. So then the shepherd would have to, oh no, don't hit it in that hole because you just have a shepherd's crook and a rock. You're not going to get out of there. Yeah, yeah. You know, so then we have to invent sand wedges and all these tools to make it easier for us. But the root of it is you're pulling it back, you're whipping it through, you're running through a ball, and as long as you're holding it correctly and the face is going to be there, it's going to kind of go where you want. You don't have to yeah. overthink that part either. So let's try a few more. We have to hit that driver and see. How's your body doing, by the way? Like any stresses and strains in your shoulders, uh, hips, knees? Feels fine. Feels okay. I feel like I'm using less on my body than I was earlier. Yeah, yeah. Because of all the angles that you created earlier, you you kind of had you kind of had to like your body was basically in the way, yeah. and then you had to move your body more to get it out of the way. Now. You're standing beside the ball and your arms are swishing beside you, so it's a lot easier and way more manageable. Yeah, yeah, try and see. There you go, like a rocket. Did you see that one? I didn't see that one. Ah, oh, no, you didn't even see it. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. All right, try another one. Yeah, no, that wasn't quite 300, but that was like, let's see what Trackman says, it was like 275. Um, but it actually had a nice draw to it. You know, it actually took off and was kind of turning to the left, which golfers will play their whole, you know, 20 years and they will, will be so frustrated because they can't make the ball do what you're doing in, like, we're probably 50 minutes in, let's see, 48 minutes in. <laughs> Right? So yeah, try it again. Just keep hitting. It's fun. You'll 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 eventually see one. Come on, you gotta see that one. Oh yes, finally. Yeah. So it's down there, like that far putting green. There's a purple flag. It's down there. No, nobody will swing better than Joyce. Her swing is too good. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Relax. Get the shoulders to relax. The grip to relax. You're creating that swishing timing. There you go. Did you see that one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. You can see that trajectory. All right. 250 on that one because it was a little high and the location of the strike was kind of a little bit higher on the face right, right. so we are slightly penalized when we don't hit it perfect and that's your job is to gradually kind of get figure out oh if i do this swish thing and i actually connect with the dead center of the club it goes even better right. and then that means consistency wise you're going to be able to play the game because 
now you have to take that little ball and navigate an obstacle course right, right? it's like going on a mud run or something you gotta like crawl underneath fences and climb over things in an obstacle course you gotta go around water hazards over bunkers over creeks so the more consistently you strike it in the middle of the face the more predictable your clubs are Right. right, so the best players in the world know. Like I know, my um, in Arizona, my eight iron goes 166 yards, not 165, not 164. In my head, it's locked in at 166. And the reason why that I can recall that like that is because that's where I've played more of my golf. When I come up here, I have to adjust. Like when I come up here, and that eight iron goes 180 yards. It's like, oh yeah, that's right, it goes further. What am I supposed to do? But the, the reason why I can predict it and play that number is because I'm hitting it more consistently in the sweet spot. Right. right. So let's switch it up a little bit. Let's go short now because this is important to you. I'm going to give you your W. And I don't want you to, maybe we'll go in the rough. I don't want you to throw it hard. Okay. But I do want you to. Still weed whack. <laughs> weed whack. You're still weed whacking just with less aggression. <laughs> All right, we're at 51 minutes of weed whacking. It's okay if we tone this down a little bit, right? So try it, see, let's see what it does. The grip is always gonna be the same for every club, right? Pretty much, yeah. pretty much. And we're gonna, move, we're gonna make a couple little changes probably tomorrow. We'll, we'll refine it a little bit more, but for today, I'm not having you, I'm not telling you to do anything because at this point you're still, um, uh, self-discovering right you're still discovering like what does it mean to weed whack what does it mean to throw like yeah. maybe that little twinge you got in your forearm was because your hand placement wasn't quite right, right. Um, but I'm not going to throw anything at you with that yet because you're still trying to figure out how to like swish it back and forth yeah yeah, yeah. Um, putting grip might be different grip for chipping may change a little but what it be what that becomes is little manipulations that we make to make the ball maybe spin one way or go higher go lower yeah. but for now yeah just grab it how you're doing it it seems to be most natural and makes your wrist work most consistently so yeah go for it yeah and, and then that's it no no more energy than that that's nice and easy That's all right. Try another one. You just didn't weed whack low enough. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Got used to the driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you can churn up some of this grass. I mean, you're in the rough. You're, you can mow it down to a level. Do a practice swing. See if you can mow it down a little. Yeah, that would have been appropriate. Yeah. So let's do that with the ball. There you go. Nice. All right, so it's going to be about 100 yards-ish. Out of the rough with a W, that's good. Yeah, try that one. Now it's sitting up, right? So it's because it's sitting up in the grass, you don't need to cut in as low. So do a practice swing kind of at the top level of the grass. Nice. There you go. Pretty good. Right? Nice and easy, about 100 yards again. So what, what percentage of energy do you think that swish was? Five. Yeah. yeah, right? Manageable. Like 50% might be lazy. 100% yeah. is just all out. That's somewhere in the middle, right? So try 100% on this one. Give us a big swish on this one. There you go. All right, so we got about another 20 yards further. Right, good solid con. Did you see it? Yeah. I okay, did. good. <laughs> Like, whew, that was I, a good I one. I know more where to look now. Yeah, so yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, up there, <laughs> not, not over here anymore. <laughs> um, all right, good. So we're going to wrap up the video. What do you want to add to it? I mean, this is your record. We, the reason why I started video from the beginning is because I knew this was going to change yeah, yeah. Like your whole world, right? Yeah. So um, what do you want to add? What are your big takeaways? What's the things you want to really make sure you remember? I mean, really just a nice, easy, smooth, like not thinking about it. I'm not even, I mean, I've been standing just like I'm just standing, just yeah, standing, standing normally. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. I mean, really my hands and 
just kind of feeling the club more. Yeah. And just you know, letting it snap. At yeah. The yeah, letting it snap, and 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 what what happens with this weed whacking concept is now the stick moves through the object. Yeah. Right. Some of your previous thoughts are getting to the object and almost stopping. So you're guiding everything and getting to a stopping point. Now there are some good things that have come out of the the ten lessons with the golf tech. You're, you've developed a turn. Right. You've got a hip turn. Like you've got a, a shoulder rotation. These are all good things which are allowing you now to make sure that that club is actually swinging back to the inside and has good rotation. Um, and these are things that we'll just naturally do with your hips and your shoulders. But the main thing is now when we swish that stick we're mowing it down and we're letting the ball get in the way we're not hitting at an object like it's not a stationary thing that we stop at right just go through it so let's finish up with a couple more wedges i'm gonna put you right here on the shorter grass all right because that's hopefully where you'll be not in, <laughs> not in the rough yeah and this makes kind of do a couple of waggles maybe one practice swing walk over and then try to time the swish to, to kind of sweep it off there. You're going to mow a little grass, right? It's short grass to begin with, so you don't need to mow a chunk out. You can just mow a little bit. That would be a good amount. Yeah, try to replicate that mowing. Thinned it. Yeah. All right, so a thin shot. So that was a W that went 160 yards. That's not what it should do. <laughs> <laughs> that was a miss hit, but yeah. Try that again. The swishing was good. You just didn't swish low enough into the grass. So try again, same thing. Yeah, there you go. Try to get some ground, kind of mow it down a little bit. Okay, you did it. Right now, the truth is you kind of mowed a little too much. <laughs> you hit the ground a few inches before the ball, but when you were, you know, like, there's the ball there and then you hit probably four inches behind but the, right. the good news is is that you were very shallow with that so you didn't blow up your wrist kind of smacking into the ground too much so try a couple more practice swings there you go that's good right that's what we want the club to kind of bounce off the ground yeah oh, that's what the sole of the club is for is to kind of bounce mm-hmm there you go, nice, that's it. That's what it should feel like. All right, didn't get under it. Didn't. Try one more. So you weed whacked on the top half of the ball instead of mowing into the grass at ground level. There you go, that's a good one. Yep, 100 and Let's see. Yeah, about 115-ish. Yeah, so eventually we'll use TrackMan and we'll refine this and we'll start figuring out. I'll create a cheat sheet for you as to kind of how far your clubs go. But, you know, based on where we started today, uh, not one ounce of me wanted to create a cheat sheet that said your 7-iron goes 110 and your driver goes 200. I knew there was more in you, yeah. right? 300 is where we want to be. 170 on a seven iron is where we want to be. 180, 180, probably 200, like I said. Your wedge, you've already hit one, you know, almost 130. Um, cool. That's it. What do you think? I felt like I made a, a bunch of progress. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And hopefully it's simple. And we'll take a little break. Maybe we'll go do some putting, and then we'll come back and do this again. But... Um, the reason for doing it the second time around is just we gotta know we didn't forget <laughs> yeah, <of> <laughs> right so it's like yes was this a, is this some kind of magical space and was that um, is this all smoke and mirrors or can I actually repeat this in 30 minutes like um, it can be that simple and that's what we have to do is break some of the habits of thinking through some of the things you're doing and replace them with something that's really really simple now this it's no guarantee that every drive is going to go 300 and you know, every wedge is going to go high and straight but if we start with this very simple concept we can work we'll work with that yeah yeah, yeah. cool good job
Oh, can I put this on YouTube? Yeah. Okay, this will be a fun one. <laughs>